Hey guys, it's Phil with GOA, and I'm following up on this morning's breaking news. Adam Credo with the Washington Free Beacon has a great article on the Congressman Michael Cloud ATF situation that we've been working on and telling you about. That article is going to be linked below. According to the article and a letter that Congressman Cloud got from the ATF, the ATF has collected nearly 1 billion records on firearm transactions, which date all the way back to the enactment of the Gun Control Act of 1968. Back in November, I told you that Congressman Cloud of Texas, with the help of GOA, led the charge to keep the Biden administration from illegally and permanently storing records of firearms purchases in a centralized database. Now, the ATF has responded to Congressman Cloud's demand for answers on what exactly they're doing with those records. Current federal regulation says that an FFL needs to keep the last 20 years of firearm transaction records and to turn in all of those records for the last 20 years when they go out of business. The reason for this regulation is to ensure that the federal government complies with existing law restricting the creation of a federal gun registry. And even with this regulation, they're still managing to create a type of registry. This is why GOA is no compromise. But when he asked how many records they have, the ATF responded to Cloud that they have nearly one billion records with them. They estimate that over 850 million of those records are in a digitized form with the rest being on hard copies. In other words, almost 90% of the records that the ATF has collected are digitized and therefore easier to search. In effect, it's a partially complete national database of guns and gun owners. In the letter, the ATF tells the congressman, in total, ATF manages 920,664,765 out of business records as of November 2021. This includes digital and an estimated number of hard copy records that are awaiting image conversion. It is currently estimated that 865,787,086 of those records are in digitized format. And the ATF justifies this massive national database with the following. The vast majority of the criminal firearms traces completed by the ATF are done for state and local law enforcement agencies across the country pursuant to active law enforcement investigations. Now there's an obvious follow-up question here and we're gonna get to that in a little bit, but I thought this next line was them basically admitting the entire program is a waste. The National Tracing Center, the ATF, has no ability to determine the successful prosecution of hundreds of thousands of crime gun traces it completes annually. So basically they're arguing that they need this giant database to help local law enforcement solve crimes, and yet they don't know if it's successful in helping those local law enforcement agencies. Could you even get away with something like that? If you remember from an earlier video we did, the whole reason we're in this fight right now is because the Biden administration wants to change the regulation so all business records from an FFL go to the ATF. And the Biden administration's justification for why they need more than 20 years of records to be sent to the ATF is dubious at best. In fact, when the rule banning records older than 20 years was finalized back in 1985, the ATF said that relatively few requests for traces of guns involve transactions older than 20 years. So it's not about solving crimes. It's actually about completing this national database with the goal of confiscation. We all knew that, but every day we're getting more and more proof. And I have some follow-up questions. Why doesn't the ATF know how successful this tracing program is for local law enforcement agencies? And if for some reason it's impossible to know that, how can they possibly justify the utility of a national database? What other databases does the ATF control and how many records are in those? If you didn't already think confiscation is part of the plan, the last video we did on the ATF approving the confiscation of FRT and WOT triggers should put that question to rest forever. So let's not even pretend that confiscation isn't a possibility because it's literally happening right now. Gun Owners of America's view is that all gun laws are unconstitutional because they violate the Second Amendment. Congress also has no business spying on our private purchases. So what do we do about this? Well, for one, Congress needs to act. These records need to be deleted and the ATF and the Biden administration and all future presidential administrations must stop keeping records on gun owners. 
And you all can use the link in the description below to demand Congress delete the registry. It's time to get involved. We'll update you if anything else happens on this. In the meantime, subscribe to the channel and check out our Instagram page at the Minuteman Moment. Thanks for watching.